We've had an opportunity at MINI to do some pretty cool things. Um, once in a while, we find opportunities to work with other brands. Um, sometimes we find opportunities to work with individuals. And uh, in this short case study, I want to share with you a program that we did with an individual. Um, and this was pretty cool. Does anyone know who that is up there, jumping over our MINI? Yep, so that's Tony Hawk. And uh, we had an opportunity to uh, meet Tony. I met him at a uh, fundraising event for an amazing foundation that um, he's put together, the Tony Hawk Foundation, which helps to build and revitalize skate parks in underserved neighborhoods. They've built uh, over 500 so far in all 50 states and in a few countries overseas. And we got to connect and spend some time together and when uh, I took him motoring around New York City, I asked him what it was, uh, some important things if he was to work with brands, because he's uh, had some experience working with brands. You know, what's the most important thing? And the one word he gave was, uh, it's gotta be authentic. So authenticity. Um, that didn't fit into our five C's, but I think we've all heard that word and used that word over the last two years or so. And what I wanted to share with you is a little bit of kind of what that means and how can you actually partner uh, with a brand or a person in a way that's authentic to them and is also authentic to you. It's a hard thing to do. Um, usually one kind of maybe uh, overskirts the other, but in this case, we're able to find a good balance. And I'm gonna show you a couple of pieces of work real quick and, uh, and then talk to you about the partnership. But one of the first things that we did uh, in working uh, with Tony is that if it was going to be authentic, we wanted him to be a mini owner. So we didn't want to just kind of give a celebrity a car and then they're tweeting about it and all that kind of stuff. So Tony uh, went online, he designed a car. Um, this is a countryman, John Cooper Works, black on black. And uh, we uh, loved what he designed and he actually shared it with his audience and said, this is what I'm thinking of designing. What do you guys think? And we told him that about half of our owners actually name their car. So half of our owners name their car. Um, Miley has named her car. Na Miley's a new mini owner. Stand up, Miley. Yeah. Miley, what's the name of your car? Charlie Cooper. Charlie Cooper. Any other mini owners in the house? Okay, see by the end of this session. Um, so Tony put it out to his audience and said, what do you think I should name my car? And he took it upon himself to also say, you know, whoever gives me the name by 5.30, uh, I'll, you know, you get the skateboard. That was something he did on his own. We didn't like do a whole thing with promotion and legal and sweepstakes and all that kind of stuff. We told him something interesting that our owners do and he went upon himself and did that. And uh, he actually came back later and said, this was the most like, positive engagement I've gotten from um, a post that I've done in terms of the response and the suggestions and so forth. So one of the other things we did, um, every other year, we actually motor across the country with our owners. So we spend two weeks together with our owners. We don't do focus group, groups. We actually like get in our minis and we motor across the country with our owners. About 6,000 owners come with us. Um, not all of them go the whole distance, but there are different legs in between. And at the start of Mini Takes the States last year, which actually started up in San Francisco last year, next year it'll start on the East Coast and come West. Um, so again, anyone becomes a Mini owner between now and then, join us. Um, Tony got to know our community a little bit. He actually started off the rally by jumping over the cars and so forth. And, it was kind of a cooler way than just cutting a ribbon. And this quote here, interestingly enough, it really kind of got to part of the core of what we were trying to figure out together, which is that, like, how do these two things skate together? Other than Tony Hawk, cool guy, good image, you know, that's going to maybe rub off on many and we're kind of cool and um, that would work. But as you dig deeper and you start to really try to look at the power of what's going on here, especially with what the community cares about, there was something about skating and the culture of skating, and it's actually an individual sport 
um, but the community comes together to kind of push each other and make it even more interesting and creative and powerful. And that's something that happens when you're motoring as well. You're sometimes by yourself, but when this community comes together, it becomes really powerful. So we started playing off that a little bit, and then we started thinking about some campaigns to put together. And one of the things that we wanted to do was to promote our racing heritage, which not a lot of people know about. Um, and we kind of went back to the early days. Um, in the 60s, many actually won these Monte Carlo uh, rallies and races, and we wanted to let people know about that. And Tony obviously has a history of obviously winning competitions and so forth. So we kind of said, as we were introducing a new car, the new John Cooper works, what would it be like if we kind of brought together one of our race car drivers and Tony, what would that like, look like? So we put this video together. So that was a pretty fun shoot to work on. Uh, it was a really cool experience. Um, and again, we kind of had some script, stuff scripted out, but it was interesting also to bring the race car driver together with Tony and figure out what kind of things we could do together um, between uh, the car and skater. And then we started to think about uh, what else we could do to get some of our core messages across. So again, like how do you work with others where you don't kind of just you know, hope things work out. But one of our messages also is to let people know about a larger mini, the mini countryman, and that it's actually great for families. Most people think a mini, that's not gonna fit my family. And we obviously wanted to have uh, kind of the right image in terms of a cool family, and we couldn't have thought of a cooler family than uh, Tony Hawk and his kids. And so we got together and we started thinking about what would it be like, you know, Tony uh, drives a countryman and he drives his kids around and we started thinking about things that they do together and what would it be like uh, if Tony and, and the boys had an adventure? So we put this together. It's not far now. kind of closed. Take your family on a road trip less ordinary. The surprisingly spacious So um, whether you appreciate those spots or don't appreciate those spots, the first one was just a video. This one has now started to run on national TV. And we've started to see uh, some real traction with these. And we started to see people connect with these in a different way. You know, and I think you know, if you ask many, we love the partnership. We appreciate uh, working with Tony. If you ask Tony, he would, well, why don't we ask him ourselves? So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Tony Hawk. So, thanks for joining us, Tony. This is a little bit surprise and a gift to all of you for hanging inside on a beautiful day. But we thought we'd take a couple minutes and uh, 
maybe just talk about some of the things that uh, Tony could share from his perspective. Some of us maybe with our brands or agencies work with personalities or celebrities or other brands, but um, what's it like for you to work with a brand like Mini and kind of what works best or what doesn't work so well? Uh, well, I enjoy it because I get a lot of creative freedom and you know, they allow me to really express it in my own voice and, and share it with my fans, but also you know, keep the message that Mini wants, but, but in a way that I feel is authentic and I feel that, that represents what I do and, and the people I connect with. And, um, and they trust me and that, that is huge. I mean, that, to be honest, like I've, uh, I've been doing social media for a while. I was on Instagram early on and, um, and it, was hard to, it was hard to fight for that freedom you know, in terms of, of working with, with other companies and things. And to, for the most part, I just kind of uh, was denying a lot of offers because they were so obsessed with having it in, in their message and their um, talking points, and it just sounded so stale. Um, but working with Mini has been, has been refreshing. And, and, uh, but early on, we established that, that yeah. that's how it was going to be. And um, I mean, uh, one, I don't know, one of the things you might have saw was me jumping over the car, and uh, that was the first day I got the car. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was yeah. literally the day off the lot. I was like, I gotta I gotta announce that I got this car, and yeah. we set up that shot jumping it, and uh, yeah, that's, that one right that's there. This picture here, yeah. And I I think I like flew to Australia that night. Yeah. But I just had to get it out there that yeah. I got the car, and and, uh, and that's so the, the, right. And we didn't even orchestrate that. He just was like, I'm getting a new car. I'm jumping it. So yeah. Yeah, it's so. a mini, <laughs> not a van. Yeah. There you go. Um, so this conference, uh, as we've talked about, is videonomics. So it's kind of about uh, really how things are changing so quickly. And you know, you've been at the forefront of social media. I think you have like 2.2 million on Instagram. You have 5 million followers on Facebook, and so forth. In some ways, like you're a medium in a way, and you're able to reach a lot of people through these interesting techniques. Whereas 10 years ago, we would have had to wait to get covered by an event or something. What is it like for you to actually like put content out there, and how do you think about it? Mini aside, or just um, I just think of it more of, of having it being entertaining. You know, even if it is advertisement driven, I want it to be something that's interesting to look at or something that's interesting to to hear about. And um, that's a fine line for sure. But um, but I just think of it in terms of look at the you know I'm thinking about the people that, that you follow or on the social media. Like, who cares if they're getting coffee? It's like you want to, you know, you really want to um, hear something interesting, or that maybe they're in some unique situation that you'll never be in. And what is that perspective? And, and I feel like that's the kind of stuff I want to share. All the while, obviously, you know, doing stuff through skating, and um, we have a YouTube channel uh, that is skate centric and sharing things from there that I think will interest the general public, not just the skate um, public. So that's kind of where, where I live in terms of. Um, being a liaison, I guess, from the hardcore skate fans to the general public, like I think this is interesting. You know, this is a dog on a skateboard. People identify with that. <laughs> yeah. And how do you, as you then see comments come in or likes or, you know, uh, whatever kind of indicators you're looking for, how do you look at that? And know that that's good. Try that. Um, more? I can usually tell within yeah. the first hour or so if something is going to resonate, but it's more about. The amount, well, for, for like on Instagram, it's, it's people tagging each other. Yeah. And that, that's the sure sign of something that's going to that's gonna hit because they're all alerting their friends to it, even if they don't follow you. Um, and the feedback, I mean, the feedback is immediate. It's honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's brutal sometimes, but, but it's also valuable. You know, I think that it's, it's the best focus group. Like, I, you know, we used to, with our video game series, it was always about the focus groups, and that, that stuff would drive me crazy because, like, you put 10 kids in a room and you give them candy. Like, it, I don't think they're giving you honest feedback about yeah. this stuff. <laughs> that this commercial is really the best one that they chose. Yeah. Um, and now it is immediate and it's directly to me. So right. um, that's what I enjoy. And, and I've gotten mostly great comments about the mini stuff cool. that's out there. Yeah, and you're doing this. With your own thumbs and, and I do it myself, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that's one of my. I don't know. I, it has to be my voice. I don't really trust anyone else to do it. Yeah. Um, talk for a second, and then we're going to get these folks to lunch. But about um, you don't have to get into specifics with YouTube, but you were one of the early ones that uh, was asked to set up a channel. Yeah. The Ride Channel. Um, that's 
uh, emerged and kind of even started to go in a different direction. And then also talk about um, some of us at brands or agencies are thinking through, should we have in-house production? And, and mm -hmm. you know, you have a crew and you've set up a production company yeah. also. Talk yeah. about those decisions. Uh, well, works. the production company existed before the YouTube channel. Uh, we used to do programming for ESPN and um, other, uh, other brands, other networks and things that was all action sports oriented. But uh, for our YouTube channel, we heard that YouTube was going to start funding channels and we proactively my producer and I flew up there and met with them and said, you know, we already do this. We already have the skate stuff. We already have stuff ready to post now. Yeah. And we were so far ahead of the game and we had such good resources that they agreed to it. So now we're on our third year and to have a self-sustained YouTube channel going three years feels pretty good. And, and yeah. we are good at incorporating advertisers if they want to be part of it where we'll do a show or a segment and feature that product, but in a way that's more natural. In a way, yeah. you know, I hate using organic, but in a way that, that feels more real than just like, oh, and we're drinking Starbucks today, and now we're going to go skate. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and that's, you know, we, the, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges, of, obviously, of, of the advertising, but um, that's why it's fun. I, I love that stuff. Cool. Well, I'm sure everyone will uh, join me in thanking you for spending time and coming down here. Sure. And thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.